Hey guys, it's Lee here from Click Studios, bringing you another video, and today we'll be talking about our new browser-based remote session launcher. For those of you that don't know what our browser-based remote session launcher is, it's a feature in our software that allows you to make secure connections to machines on your network without the need to enter a username and password. We actually have two remote session launchers. Our original one is client-based, which utilizes a physically installed application on your machine. The one we're doing a video on today is our browser-based one, which runs directly from within your web browser once you are logged into Password State. To quickly outline the benefits of using the browser-based remote session launcher, it runs directly from within your browser and can be used from any browser on all operating systems. It supports RDP and SSH connections. All sessions are initiated from your Password State web server, not your desktop that you are logged into and you can record these sessions for playback at a later date, handy for temporary contractors and vendors that come onto site. Okay, so before we dive in and show you how this feature works, there's a few settings you may want to consider under the administration area, which will help you control how this is used. For example, you can grant access to this browser-based remote session launcher for individuals or groups of users by clicking on this button here. Or you may want to choose which users will have their sessions recorded by clicking on this button here. Please take your time to review all of these settings and set them to suit your needs. Next, I need to explain how this feature handles the credentials it uses to connect into your hosts. You can either use what we call a remote session credential, or if you don't have any remote session credentials configured, then it will try to connect with any password records you have access to, which are linked to the host. Remote session credentials are found under the host tab and these would be used under a couple of different scenarios. Number one, you would like to use one account that has permissions to connect into multiple machines and an example could be your Windows domain admin account. You could configure a remote session credential to use your domain account to log into all Windows servers or all Windows desktops, for example. The second reason you would use a remote session credential is because you have a contractor or vendor on site for a couple of days you would grant them temporary access to this credential and the contractor will be connecting to the machines on your network without actually knowing the password that they're authenticating with. So if I have a look at the remote session credential that I've pre-configured, you'll see that I've set it up to be able to remote into any Windows server on my network using my domain administrator account, which is called LSAND. If I now take a look at the permissions of this credential, at this point only I have access to it, but you can grant access to more users under here if you need to. If I now go to the host tab and select one of my Windows servers, you'll see that it's using the LSAND account from the remote session credential to log in. If I click the auto launch button now, it will make an RDP connection to this server. And if I open up a command prompt, it confirms that I've logged in as LSAND uh, without the need to enter a username and password. If you wanted to go full screen, simply double click the tab for your server and it will expand out your session as large as it can go within your browser. Simply double click it again to return it to normal size. Now there's a few different ways we can close out a session. You can either log out of the machine using the start menu or in an SSH session type in type exit. Closing the tab via this little cross button up the top or if you browse away from the host tab altogether, this will terminate any active sessions that you have. As soon as I close the session, this will add a recorded video that you can view at a later date if you need to. These recorded sessions are completely automated and will start and stop without the need to press any extra buttons. If I now select a different host, which is not a Windows server, you'll notice that it won't be using my LSAND account to connect Rather, it has found five individual password records in my system that I have access to. I should be able to select any of these and it will log in for me with that user. Likewise, if I now select a Linux machine, it's found a single password record with the username of Mali, which is linked to this LinMint test one host. One of the great features of this browser-based remote session launcher is you can open up multiple connections and they will run independently within their own tab. So as you can see, I can alternate between the three tabs and be working on multiple machines at once. I'll now close out all three sessions by using the cross button on the tab.
And if we have a look under administration, remote session management, recorded sessions, we should see three recorded sessions now in here. To view these, simply click the play button and you can use the scan ahead or pause buttons as desired. When you finish the video and you no longer have any need for it, you can simply delete it from the actions menu. With our remote session launches, all connections made are audited and you'll find these logs by selecting the remote session connection activity type under administration and then auditing. In this grid here we have a number of auditing logs which shows the date the connection was made the IP address the session was initiated from, the username the connection was made with, and the machine the connection was made to. Now that concludes this video of how to use this browser-based remote session launcher. As a password state administrator, you will need to configure this feature as a once-off process, and you can find the full instructions for this under the help menu, user manual, and then KB articles. I've also linked a video tutorial for this process in the description of this video if you prefer to watch that. We hope you like this new feature and thanks for watching our video. Please let us know if you have any questions about this by contacting us on support at glitchstudios.com.au.